Hello, welcome back to, Beth, to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley, and this is the third, or it should be the third, in a series of videos on Cheshire churches. We're here in the church of St. Peter's, Swettenham, and this is a great example of the way that many English parish churches have just kind of happened over time. There are bits here from the 14th, 17th, 18th and 19th centuries and each of these represents a partial rebuilding of the church. It represents a change in the way the church looked and yet there is still a continuity. This is one of a, a number of churches not that far from Congleton, which of course is not that far from Stoke-on-Trent, that are or were originally timber framed. Cheshire was back in the day very heavily wooded and so building churches if you didn't have a lot of money you would very often go and chop down some trees season the timber and build your church out of wood now being the nature of timber framed churches and given that they were regarded like timber framed houses as quite low status as time continued, they would be rebuilt in brick and in stone. And that's what's happened here. There's been a, a rebuild, but there hasn't been any plan to it. It's just kind of happened, an aisle here, an aisle there, a chapel here, a chapel there, a tower, and so on, until the building that we see today has come into existence. So we'll have a look around and see how this church has grown and changed over the years. So as usual, we start at the west end. Entry to the church is through the, the west tower, which is an 18th century addition. You can see these aisle arcades, and although these are Norman in style, you'll immediately notice that they are in fact 19th century. They are sort of fake Norman. And they've been put in, of course, because the original aisle arcades were wooden. So it's been replaced with stone to just make it a bit, bit posher because this is a, a church that has a very definite connection with a, a couple of local big houses and a couple of local families particularly the Mannering family and as we go around we'll see the Mannering chapel but also there's the, the Swettenham chapel the Swettenham family the people who lived here back before the reformation the, the people who really gave the well so did the Mannerings but they're the people who take their name from the village Swettenham. St. Peter's therefore very much has this character of a sort of country house church, a church that uh, is associated with, to say, these, uh, this important, these important families. The other family here are the Tippings, and they're the ones who built here, you can see, the South Isle, and this is a big Victorian Gothic aisle with just see these burial, well, these, these tomb niches. We'll have a better look as we go around. But also, of course, we've got the much simpler, because this is 17th century North Isle, and the North Isle has not these Victorian Gothic windows, but wooden windows with these leaded panes, which is very, very much how the 17th century worked. And it's also, it's still basically wooden on this side. We have the commandment boards. These would originally have been in the chancel either side of the east window, but they've been moved here because in the 19th century the idea of having the Ten Commandments up at the front like that fell out of favour. I'm not quite sure why. The organ at the end, obviously these are dummy pipes, appear to have really been made or intended for something a bit bigger than this church, but there we are. And up here we have something interesting that you'll often, well, you sometimes find, which is the old violin used about 1811 by Charles Newton at Swettenham Church. Because before the organ, there would have been a little band. And Charles Newton obviously was the violinist or the fiddler, depending on how formal you want to be about it. Pulpit. This is uh, 
at least in part, 18th century. It's been obviously been renewed around the top, but the side panels are definitely older. Um, 18th century would have been part of a three-decker, which has been taken down in the 19th century when these things fell out of favour, um, as they did. So, squeeze past the pulpit. Um, here we have the chancel, and this is the oldest part of the church. And you can see here these timbers. This, this is the timber frame, the 14th century timber frame of the chancel. And it's the, these uh, timbers represent, as I say, the oldest part of the church. And originally, the whole thing would have been timber frame, got a nice, nice chandelier there. Here we have the Mannering Chapel. The Mannering Chapel is, uh, I believe, 18th century. And it's got these rather nice... It's used the vestry these days, but it has the organ console in it for some reason. Um, well, I suppose they can't put it anywhere else, but get a good view there of the inner workings of the organ as well. But it's got these rather nice bullseye windows, these round windows. So this, this is the uh, Mannering Chapel. And you have here a memorial to the loved memory of... Evelyn Swetton and Blinko, who died October 28th, 1874, aged three years and eight months. And Reginald St. George Elaine Blinko, who died January the 12th, 1875, aged two years and eight months, the fourth and fifth sons of the Reverend Robert Blinko, M.A., patron and rector of this church, and Charlotte Louisa, his wife. They were lovely and pleasant in their lives. In their death, they were not divided. Of such is the kingdom of God. And it's quite simple door here. And again, looking back, we see the very complicated arrangement of the building. And this is, of course, because I say it's happened over time. It's just um, no one had a plan. They just let the church happen, let the bits fall where they may, as, they, as you might say. Nice communion rails. Note the very closely spaced balusters, which is always a, a sign of older communion rails. 17th, 18th century. The Reredos is made of, of simple panelling with just these two flaming urns, and now that's a technical term, urns with flames coming out of them. And then we have the Swettenham Chapel here. There we are celebrating the Queen's 90th birthday. And the Swettenham Chapel, Thomas Robert Eaton Wybart Warren Swettenham. Of Swettenham Hall, Major 2nd Battalion, East Yorkshire Regiment, who fell in action 15th, oh, sorry, 5th of February 1915 at St. Eloy near Ypres. So this is the Swettenham Chapel. And this is 17th century, very, very notable. So there we are, John Wybalt Swetnam, Swetnam Hall. Um, the Swetnams retained a great deal of influence here. And of course the local pub is the Swetnam Arms. And there we are looking across to the Mannering Chapel. And then we have the Tipping Chapel is basically here. And so this is the this uh, north aisle. And you can see we've got, again, this fake Norman work. And this is all fake 14th century. So again, most, most interesting. There was a restoration here in the 1960s. You can see we've got these uh, pews, which are not very old. I suspect they're late 19th, early 20th century. And that's when it's reached its current form. You'll see a couple of old standards here. These are clearly regimental banners. So I'll just uh, have a look if I can find described whose banners they are, which regiments they are of, and it would help if I don't, didn't drop the leaf on the cloth. Um, <laughs> so, no, it does not mention which regiments they are, but clearly these are regimental banners. You can see they're faded and really falling to pieces. They've been laid up here in the church You'll notice these rather nice lanterns between the arcades. And again, another nice 
brass chandelier. So here we are in the, the tipping chapel, and you can see down here we have these uh, tomb recesses, and they contain the memorials tombs of several members of the family. Um, there's a, an, uh, well, sunlight shining through that. You can just see a Flemish medallion there. And there's Elijah, well, Elisha in there, and Elijah on the other side. This is the Victorian font. It's sat here, it's got the emblems of the four evangelists on it. It's sat here because it's been moved and replaced, thankfully, with the 18th century font, which is here. And I know it's currently got a display in it, but the display can be moved. And it's a, nice, it's a nice example of what's known as the birdbath style of font. So it's a very splendid building. Inside, we've got all these different styles, Victorian Gothic here, plain 17th century here, and 14th century in the chancel. So very unusual to have all of these eras represented, particularly the 17th and 18th centuries, because very often the Victorians like to sweep them away, but not here not here. So we'll have a look outside next. In fact, before we go outside, I've just had a look at the guidebook rather than the walk around leaflet. And the guidebook tells me that these colours are of the 4th Battalion of the Cheshire Regiment and of the 2nd Royal Cheshire Militia. The Cheshire Regiment, of course, being the, the regular army and the militia being the... Um, volunteers. The regiment full-time, the militia, is very much your part-time soldiers. And as we stroll up here, we have here the, the pulpit. And in fact, one of the things I hadn't noticed is the base of the pulpit is actually medieval. So this is a medieval pulpit base that's then been reused and altered over the years, which is quite interesting in its own way. And as we look west, we've got this nice screen here with a list of the rectors either side and obviously the tower is beyond there so we'll go through there outside and have a look around the outside of this very interesting building which is just as interesting on the outside as it is on the inside and so here we are outside at St Peter's Sweat and immediately you can see here we're on the south side of course and you can see the south aisle this big stone Victorian Gothic aisle, the tipping aisle. And you can see also this rather splendid 18th century tower with its uh, finials on the corners and its nice rounded window. There was no tower here before the 18th century. Towers, you know, we, we tend to think of medieval churches as being nave, chancel and then a west tower, but the tower was very often a later addition. It wasn't part of the original building. And so here, the tower isn't added until the 18th century. And a very nice tower it is too. Well, that's two phases. You can also see the south door here, which is blocked up. That's that the font is in front of it on the out, in the inside, and obviously that means you've got to block it up. So we'll have a look around the inside, around the outside rather, and then we'll say some closing words when we're done with that. And so here we are, and you can also see at the east end you've got the Swettenham Chapel in brick with the what technical term is diapering. It's a, it's a very simple form of diapering, just a sort of checkerboard pattern alternating red and uh, black bricks. And of course the black is got very largely just by charring the, um, charring the brick. You can also see the main roof line of the nave above that rather fancy roof of the tipping chapel. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll go around the west end first, the tower end, and then loop around the, the chancel. Um, that's the local pub, the Swettenham Arms. It's very common to find the pub and the church 
quite close to each other here, right in the middle of the village. And it's a, it's a very charming little village, of course, because it is a, an estate village. And you've got all these, uh, all these gravestones surrounding the church, of course, mostly on the south side, because that was historically where you, you did it. There were, shall we say, connotations on the north side. Aren't any more, but there were once. There's part of the pub again. Here we have this very, very splendid tower. And, and you can see just there the rather awkward join of the nave and the Tipping Chapel. Nice sign church open today. It's always nice to see them. Particularly a building like this, because very often you get this idea that, well, newer buildings not that, that aren't quite so medieval, or buildings that are a bit more... Um, rustic in places, as this is, are less interesting. They're not, they're really interesting. You can see up there the urns on the top of the tower, the pinnacles, so very nice piece of 18th century brickwork, that. So we stroll up round here, and here we have the North Isle. As I said, this is a piece of uh, 17th century brickwork. And one of the ways you can tell dates is the size of the bricks. Before the 19th century, bricks are handmade. They're made in hand moulds, and they vary in size. You can see there also the, the timber framing still of the clerestory. The clerestory, as we said before, is to let a bit more light into the building. Vestry on this side, little vestry and the Mannering Chapel. You can see here it's quite interesting how you differentiate, uh, sorry about the, um, let's watch out for the crocuses down here, um, very nice, how you differentiate the posh bit there from the less posh bit. You can also see that there used to be a door here apparently because you can just about see there the lines in the brickwork. So was there a door? Could very well have been a, a north doorway. But here's the Mannering Chapel, and the Mannering Chapel is very interesting because it, it is this posher brickwork, but it's still the same sort of 17th century brick. You'll notice we've, we've got a random 19th century buttress there, which is just a bit random. But up here we have the Mannering Crest. Now this is the head, supposed to be the head of a wild donkey, and it commemorates the fact that during one of the Crusades, one of the Mannerings was a crusader, and his unit of knights, they were surrounded by Saracens. He had two horses shot out from under him by Saracen archers. He would have had, of course, a... He would have had, of course, a squire with his spare horse. And so he was dismounted, surrounded by enemies. And then the, the moment came when he spotted a herd of wild donkeys feeding nearby jumped on the back of one of them, and off it went. So his life was saved by a wild donkey, and the wild donkey's head then becomes the crest of the family. Of course, not sure what the wild donkey thought about it, it having this uh, arm, armed and armoured crusader jump on its back and ride off on it, but there we are. And you can see here again some of this, this timber framing work, and that lovely, lovely 18th century tower. It's an interesting example here that Whereas clearly there was money in the 19th century, there was nobody willing to not to knock this building down and build a new one, and that is a great, great thing, because it means that we have this structure that shows all these different dates. And because you've got these different families, the Swettenhams, the Tippings, the, and the Mannerings, and they're building these various bits of the church, their own chapels, you've got this great array of styles. You can see here, for example, here's the the bullseye window of the Mannering Chapel, and over here is the arch window of the Swettenham Chapel, and in the middle this nice plain window of the chancel. It is absolutely amazing. And I suppose there were more churches like this in the 18th century before the Victorians came, but on the whole, unfortunately, what the Victorians tended to do was say, oh, this is all a bit rustic, let's knock it down, or no, mostly knock it down and build something new. 
That's not what happened here. What happened here was they said, this is the ancient church of our ancestors, and we will keep it as it is. Um, so it's very, very splendid in its own way, as this sort of, sort of building tends to be. And there are very few buildings like it. Now, in this part of Cheshire, there's a, a few other timber frame churches, uh, one at Martin, for example, one at Siddington. Uh, the best is at Piva. Um, but this, this is, it has its own special charm because it's got all these bits of, of different periods built onto it. So there we are, that's uh, the outside here at Swettenham. As you can see, we're right back here by the, the south, south aisle. And so there you have it, St Peter's at Swettenham. It, it's a marvellous building. And as I say, it's, it's unusual because it's never had a complete rebuild. And it's still this wonderful patchwork of different periods, different eras in English history, in English architecture, from the 14th century wood through to the 19th century stone. Well, thank you for watching, and until uh, next time, may God bless you and keep you.